Welcome everyone. I'm Marie Manucheri. We are so glad that you are joining us. I'm very excited to introduce our special guest today, Peng Roden Her. Peng Roden Her is a licensed acupuncturist, medical intuitive, and master of Qigong. As a medical intuitive, he has the ability to sense the physical, mental, and emotional ailments of his patients. He combines these gifts to treat both the symptom and the source. Welcome, Peng. Thank you. Thank you, Marie, for having, for having me. Yeah, it's lovely to have you. I am a fan of Qigong. How long have you been studying Qigong? Uh, ever since I was a kid. So I want to say around 13 to 15. Wow. Um, started doing meditation and then just to kind of doing it really for martial arts and for self-awareness. And then it turned into something else. So, yeah. Is that what led you to become an acupuncturist? Yes. Well, the thing is, um, the acupuncturist was probably, you know, by divine, <laughs> but um, the, through the practice of Qigong and meditation, I started, you know, as kids, you start to, when you get to a deeper part of the practice, you begin to sense the other things, um, the presence of other things, other realms, other dimensions, other thought forms. And that was something we weren't prepared for. And then, um, but it became a part of the course. So what got me into Qigong, what got me into um, acupuncture was the, just the awareness, all the stuff that we did for martial arts. And when I did, when we studied martial arts, we studied uh, pressure, pressure point striking. And so from the pressure point striking, we, I never had a use for it. I understood it, but then um, the acupuncture school was just kind of, uh, uh, I'll try to, Let's see. So I was supposed to go to law school and then um, took my pre LSAT and then got the scores back. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to get into law school. <laughs> so uh, I was bumming around, feeling depressed for about two weeks, um, drinking a couple of beers. And then one of my couple, one of my favorite movies, one of my favorite martial arts actions, uh, superstars came out with a movie called Kiss of a Dragon. His name is Jet Li. Because he starred in the movie uh, Kiss a Dragon, and he was a um, secret agent who had uh, was using acupuncture to put needles in his, you know, um, the bad guys' necks and make them pass out. And I was like, "Wow, that's cool!" So I started googling acupuncture schools, and then from there, I just found, I just knew, like, "Yep, that's what I'm supposed to be doing." So uh, that's kind of how I became an acupuncturist. <laughs> Sounds like divine intervention that you didn't go to law school. A big time, big time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's beautiful. And I love that you combine, you know, Chinese medicine, really all of it, um, with your acupuncture, with Qigong. That's really amazing. I'm sure it's phenomenal in your work. I'm sure it is. Uh, so, why don't we go ahead and start talking about some of the things that are really exciting you these days that, you know, you've been receiving downloads of information and putting it into your consciousness and your awareness. What are some of the signs and symptoms that occur, that begin to occur when we aren't in alignment with our higher sense of self? The body is like a, a tuning fork for the divine. And so it's kind of like a, like a cell phone, like a cell phone. It's a signal, it's a receiver. And what we're putting energy out, we're receiving energy constantly. And so when our diet isn't in place and when our thoughts aren't in the right place, um, our emotions aren't in the right place, then we aren't, we aren't in grace, we can say, right? So we sort of start to lose grace with all the forces that are trying to communicate with us. And when that begins to happen, then the body starts to kind of fall apart. Chronic conditions that, you know, a back pain that kind of tends to go, come and go, starts to come, starts to show up. Um, digestive issues start to show up. Uh, stress levels start to increase. Um, our sleep patterns start to become more interrupted. So difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep, difficulty um, you know, waking up with energy. Um, so there's all these little signs and symptoms letting us know that from the body, letting us know that uh, we aren't in alignment. Uh, and so the, the quickest things we can do is check our diet, check our physical activity, check our our, our our thoughts and our our emotions and the thing is it, it it's going to sway it's going to change all, to, all 
because we have life experiences, of course. Uh, but when these signs and symptoms start to show up, it lets us know that we are not in alignment um, through the body, that is. Or that's one of the things. The other thing is also is that perhaps there's also a spiritual journey that we have to embark some, some um, past events or traumas or childhood wounds or belief systems that are starting to, we're getting to a certain age where the soul's like, okay, this lesson that you're supposed to learn, uh, we're going to bring this lesson up in a form of, in this way, in a, in a physical form, in order to catch your attention, because this is the only way we can catch your attention. And then, then the body starts to kind of fall apart and it lets us know that we aren't in alignment or we have a lesson to learn or these old trauma wounds have to come up. And then that's how we are taught. Um, well, that's how I am perceiving the information at this moment in time. Yeah, I find that extremely fascinating because our consciousness, our higher self is so aware that we really do want to learn certain things in a lifetime. And absolutely, some people learn it through processes in their physical form that aren't working at the level that they would like to, or perhaps something's not working well in their financial sector or their relationship. You know, these things mm -hmm. occur so that we can gain higher awareness and align to that a beautiful aspect of consciousness that we all incredibly have. Could you explain a little bit about body conscious and how it how this differs from therapy, how the healing differs from therapy? Yeah. So this this thing called the body consciousness or body conscious is something that I've been pick, picking up or for years I've been trying to find words for what the heck it is I do, or more specifically what is done through me um, when I treat patients. And what I'm beginning to recognize is that the body is like the body is like a, a physical hard drive that stores all the software, all the software is all your memories, all your emotions, all your life experiences, this lifetime, past, past lifetime, whatever the case may be, right? And then there's the Wi-Fi that connects you all to the divine, right? But the body is like the hardware. And when the body conscious has its own plan, it in order when when the when the hardware becomes overwhelmed with software it needs to release and let go of some of the pro programs that are put into the body so some traumas some lessons yeah the body conscious has its own plan so if we, even even if we want to go in and work and and see a therapist and talk about a particular event in our life to retrieve and relieve and to heal some of these processes from that an intellectual standpoint the body says nope we're going to do this right here, right now, this event. And the body is very in your face about, you can keep touching those things, but the, but the obstacle that's, that, that's, that's creating suffering right now, this is the obstacle you have to face. This is the obstacle you have to kind of uh, start working on. And so as I treat patients on the table, they'll have flashbacks of their childhood, uh, you know, memories. They'll have, um, they'll, they'll have images in their, uh, about what's going on in their life and they'll have solutions to some of those problems or, or answers or opportunities or another way to look at it or another way to perceive it. Um, and it's not. And, and so the body has its own intelligence. The body wants you to work on particular things and they tend to be the more difficult things that you, we tend to kind of push down. Uh, so the body consciousness has its own agenda and um, it's going to be uh, that all of a sudden you wake up with a tight neck, all of a sudden you wake up with a low back, all of a sudden you wake up with, you didn't do anything other than like bend over, right? And then now you, now you have this, this pain that's in, uh, that, that's in your face, making sure that you address it. Um, so, that's, that's typically a time where, um, yeah, I, I encourage patients to get some acupuncture. I, I encourage patients and students uh, of Qigong to take time to reflect and breathe, focus on the pain, feel the pain, sorry. Feel the pain, sit with it, uh, and then breathe in the nose, exhale at the mouth, and then ask the question, what is the lesson? What is the lesson? And by doing that, you'll get the lesson right away. If you overthink it, then you're overthinking it. You usually get the answer right away. 
And typically the intuitive part, that the intuitive part that comes with the, the human component is the, um, you know, all the things that we know we should be doing, those are the things that we should be doing. Uh, and, and as soon as we start getting chopping away at that list and those physical ailments that begin to go away, it's so weird, but that's exactly <laughs> it. It is always weird. I, I love, again, everything you just said. Because you're really asking your patients and all of us to be present, you know, because yes. that's where all the information comes from is in the present moment. And you're basically asking your patients um, or all of us who are listening right now to embrace whatever's going on in the body, that that's the beauty of it. That's where all the yes. solutions are. That's where the magic is, is in that yes. moment. Oh, that's, and yeah. I love the term body conscious. That makes complete sense. Yeah, because it wants to be heard. It, there's a lesson that it wants to give us and how, yeah, how the divine communicates is kind of by ruffling some physical feathers. <laughs> so along with, you know, resting in your neck if it's bothering you or your lower back and asking for what the message is, do you also prescribe doing Qigong? Because I, I know that's something that really brings me very present. I'm, I'm always surprised how quickly I can get into the present moment I'm um, doing a few um, poses or movements of Qigong. My Qigong set is different from most Qigong practitioners that I, that I understand. Um, but you can do Qigong movements to help create the flow, uh, get things to move. And then uh, the breathing exercise, as long as you match them up, it's, it coordinates well. So you can get some things to move. Uh, the, the, so the Qigong set that I teach is... Um, kind of put together, I looked at all the different Qigong practices because if you look at Qigong, you can see that there are many, many practices, many, many schools of thought. Um, and um, what I, the, my struggle at that time was when I learned all these different things, I was like, okay, well, what does everybody agree on? Uh, what does everybody disagree on? Uh, what makes it unique for this particular teacher, this particular teacher, this particular teacher? Um, and I just kind of boil it down to kind of put together my own Qigong system. And what I realized is that through Qigong is a spiritual practice. And so there needs to be a, a cleansing and clearing phase, a, a purification phase that happens at the beginning. And that takes, it, it staggers and it can't be rushed. And then from there, there's a gathering phase of the Qi and then a circulating phase and we return the Qi and then restore the Qi. Uh, the idea is to, purify the energy and because what you're doing is when you're putting energy on top of energy energy on top of gunk <laughs> right because everybody has things that need to be released and cleared thought forms energy patterns uh, habits things like this and so when we put energy on top of it it, it it expands these habits these identities that we have within us some that serve us and some that no longer serve us um and so the idea is through that cleansing phase you're beginning to become more aware of the emotions that are in the background running in a background that that influence our free will and influence our decisions and uh then we begin to kind of peel away all these belief systems that we have in place so Sorry, I'm like, I'm all over the place. Um, but, the Qigong, but the Qigong set that I teach incorporates a lot of the spiritual stuff. And I talk a lot about the spiritual stuff. Um, because when you do these practices, you are tapping into the divine. You are tapping into your higher consciousness, higher self. I couldn't agree more. I think Qigong is so incredibly spiritual because you actually start to feel energy. You know, Some of us feel energy all the time because of what we do in the world or what we believe in or what we practice. But for those who perhaps don't experience that on a regular basis, that's a perfect way where you can start to feel it almost immediately as you begin yes. to practice the flow or the breath work. And it stays with you for a very long period of time. It's really quite remarkable. I, I think it's a fascinating healing tool. I think it's wonderful. Uh, what does it mean for a person to develop their character throughout their lifetime? Well, through the practice of Qigong, but as, as it's not just through the practice of Qigong, but it's also just sort of a, a, an awareness, a sense of awareness of 
okay, these are some of my character strengths. These are some of my character flaws, or should I say weaknesses at this time, right? And so long as you understand that you're striving to be your more ideal sense of self, um, then, and if you're making these little adjustments, it doesn't have to be overnight. It, it, first is it's a mental switch, it's an observation. And recognizing that um, character development is the goal of this life. And um, wow, because this life is, we're here to learn lessons. And of all the things that, when, that happen to us, when we, when we pass away, we can't take our material wealth with us. We can't take uh, nothing material, but we do take all the lessons that we learn and use those lessons to help amplify the soul. And so it brings the soul, these lessons that we learn in this lifetime, uh, brings the soul to the next level, brings the soul to a higher level of consciousness. Um, so I hope I'm answering that. Yeah. I'm not place, but. Right, so, so you're talking about really aligning to one's essence and authentic self to, to the best of their ability throughout their lifetime. And hopefully having fun too. Why we oh, yeah. are here on this, you know, stunning globe of yes. contrast and, and delicious joy. Yeah, no, that makes yeah total sense to me. So how can we help our listeners stay connected to their divine self and support? The biggest way to stay connected to the divine, some of the, you know, the best ways to stay connected to the divine is really paying attention to your diet. Um, because it's all about energy and frequency. So if you're eating foods that slow down the body, then you're no longer able to hear. So the foods we eat, the, the news that we would consume, the books we read, all of these things, these are all changing and, and the people we're around and what we're hearing, what we're listening to, all of these things influence our energy and our frequency and our vibration. And so when they are more negative, then we tend to be, then, then these negative habits begin to kind of start to uh, occur in the background of the mind. So practices such as first, you know, checking your diet. Um, and there's nothing wrong with, you know, enjoying yourself from time to time. Uh, so I do definitely want to encourage that. Um, but um, by checking your diet and having a meditation practice, having an energy practice uh, is going to be key. So when people, when I talk about energy, I see a lot of practices that people are doing these days. So I break up energy into two parts. Energy, I break it up into um, feminine and then masculine. So feminine is like the moon. There's 28 days. Every day is a different cycle. The vibration and the frequencies are definitely different. And then there's the masculine part of energy, which is the sonic. It's constant. It's constant, right? And it's so a lot of the practices that people are doing today are in accordance with vibration or frequency, which is more feminine based. Now, those practices are great, um, but just like the frequencies, they change from day to day, they change based on your mood. And so, even if you find put yourself into a good state, as soon as you get a phone call, then your mood changes either, either for the better or for the worse. And so, having something more consistent, like uh, like this is where Qigong comes in. This is where I like to encourage Qigong because Qigong has more of a energy, a yang cultivating practice where you're building up this more uh, masculine energy. That energy fuels all of the other uh, the feminine frequencies. So having a Qigong practice will keep you more in tune and then you'll, begin to feel what I call the, 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 the inner teacher of the body. Uh, because when the chi begins to move, the more you recognize and the developed relationship with the chi, you begin to recognize when the chi changes, um, there's a disruption in the force within the body and you can do things to help um, bring that, 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 that alignment back. Uh, so, or, yes, or when you eat something and you can tell that, it disrupted the force within the body and that's something you should avoid do you have a particular a diet recommendation it's going to be based on the seasons um 
what what I do is uh, in the winter time. I'm in Minnesota, so when it gets cold, it's cold. Um, so in the winter time, I'm like mostly carnivore. Uh, so I do potatoes, pumpkin, sweet potatoes, things like that, and then mostly carnivore in the winter. So red meat, um, beef and lamb, things like that. And then in the in the winter time, I'm mostly carnivore. As it hits spring and summer, then I start switching over to more chicken and fish. And then like during this part of the summer, which is like midsummer. So oh, today's the summer solstice, right? Yes. I think so. Yeah. So so midsummer was really hot. I'm mostly vegetarian, if not all vegetarian. Yeah. Yeah. I really love that idea. It's kind of a Vedic approach of looking at the seasons and adjusting your diet based on the seasons. I think that could be something that a lot of people could do instead of just trying to maintain a particular diet all the time, have some fluctuations and introduce different foods based on the seasons into your uh, life. I think that's a great idea. Very smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Just learning to pay attention to the body. Uh, I I think (laughs) it's great. Well, it's true in the summer, the body does want more vegetables and fruits Mm -hmm. and less protein and, you know, it just, wants to move more, needs more freedom and uh, needs that type of frequency. So now we have the diet and then we talked about the energy practice. Do you use Qigong for the meditation as well? Do you combine that in terms of, you know, of adding that aspect so that we can be in alignment with our higher self or do you have a different form of meditation that you recommend? Yes. It's uh, the Qigong is a form of meditation the way, the way that I teach it. And um, because it's not, um, most of the Qigong practices I see, what they'll do is they'll practice and they'll rip, they'll uh, count the, the exercises one or two, and that's great. Um, but what we do is what I teach is we go into one exercise and we go deep with that, and we're just breathing, synchronizing the movement, letting the breath move the body, not the body move the hands, right? And then um, we really hone in on the physical sensations that are occurring. And once you go deep, when you go really deep, that's when you begin to notice all the different subtleties and you're taking that one movement and uh, repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, repeating it. And then um, it it becomes a form of meditation. And when the thoughts pop up, uh, we just take the mind away from the thought, bring the mind back to the hands, the sensation of the body, and just repeat. So this is one of my... definitely what that I uh, what I teach and, and so that's really again about the present moment noticing because I think people become present as soon as they start to and they can become present in many different ways but certainly if they're noticing what their thoughts are that allows them to be present so then they can actually have some sort of management ability of their mind and not allow it to go down to some you know uncomfortable place that repeats itself that can lower your frequency and your vibration and then you choose unhealthy foods to eat and forget to meditate right we have thoughts that aren't ours and so i want to encourage people to not punish themselves for having certain thoughts um there we we may have some outlandish thoughts and just understand you you, you take a moment you pause you say well where did that come from these thoughts are not these thoughts are not the eye and then you breathe um you breathe in the nose out the mouth and you can say things like delete 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 or dissolve disintegrate vaporize those thoughts these thoughts are not the eye and then you take a couple breaths you wait feel the body and then you move on because we do have some um for those of us who are on this journey, we will bump into darker aspects of ourselves. And this is uh, something that um, a lot of people shy away from talking about. But I think if we do that, we don't empower people. And um, um, because people like women have babies and all of a sudden there's postpartum, right? All of a sudden there's a series of uh, thoughts about menacing thoughts about all kinds of horrible things. And the thing is, it, the, the life force is depleted in such a way that these thought forms are already there in the body, 
but after giving birth, the life force has depleted in such a way to where now these thoughts are strong enough to kind of pervade uh, uh, the mind, uh, the scope of your consciousness. And so understanding that these thoughts aren't yours, you practice this, to dispel these thoughts and practice to bring your vitality and energy back up so that you can keep these thoughts in check. It's, uh, it's work. It, it is. I also love um, what you just said about basically not shaming our thoughts or thinking that yes. we made a mistake or there's something wrong with us because we have these kind of wacky thoughts that everyone has and everyone has them. embracing that again, just like embracing your sore neck or your sore back or your sore tummy really brings you back into the power and the magic of the consciousness that's inside of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that's that. Correct. Just beautiful. Love that. Um, given that what we've talked about today, what is one thing you would like to leave us with or a next step our listeners can do to make changes in their own lives? Um, have a practice. Yeah, definitely have a practice. Have a daily practice and um, do your best to stick to it and just do what's in front of you. Don't think about how big it is. Just do what's in front of you. Just do the next step and everything will begin to unfold. The next five steps, you may not know, but if you just keep doing the next two, three steps, at the first two steps, the next step will show up. And um, um, yeah, have a daily practice that gets you in tune. Being, being in tune allows you to hear the messages because the thing is that our our guides, our angels, the forces that are really trying to help us out, they really are trying to talk to us. And because they can't, because they're from a speaking from a higher, communicating from a higher frequency force, it's difficult for them to get to our attention. So sometimes they have to knock some sense into our physical material forms uh, in order to get us to hear, in order for us to get, to, to get us to listen. So by practicing, these practices that allows you to tap into your higher, the higher divine, you can receive those channels much better. So I love that idea of, you know, just whatever you do each time is fine. Like, don't be so hard on yourself if your practice isn't 30 minutes or 40 minutes, you know, that it mm-hmm. will continue to build and you'll start to feel amazing. And, and mm-hmm. then you'll want to spend more time in your practice. Yep. And the thing is, I tell people is, look, this, the most simple meditation you can do is, is you get in the car and you drive to work. No music, no podcast, no radio, nothing. You just drive and you're just present. And that's, that's, that's enough for you to start getting into the practice of being uh, in meditative state. And that's that it starts or waiting in line. Right? Don't open your phone. Don't look. Just be present uh, and see what thoughts are popping up. Mm-hmm. I love these simple practices. I- I, I think people don't really understand how being in a quiet car can be extraordinarily powerful. <laughs> you know, it really yes. can be. I love that you're offering such simple things that we can do at any moment, you know, or at any time during the day and just get back into our alignment so quickly. Uh, these are fantastic. Um, I just want to thank you, Ping, so much, Rodin here, for yeah. being with us today and sharing your awareness of consciousness and the delight that you are experiencing within your own work and working with your patients. And we truly appreciate everything you do in the world. All right. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course. And what a great session with Pang Roden here. Thank you for listening.